Story time, Razor Force. Who loves a good shipwreck tale? As many will be well aware, I'm reasonably fascinated by the maritime tragedy of the RMS Lusitania, while others obsess ad astra about that other multi-ton colossus that cracked in two off the coast of New York. To me, Lucy's the Titanic with a torpedo. But I assert that the reason for our shared shipwreck boners has less to do with the tragic events themselves than with the narratives or morals we suspect they posthumously ratify. In the case of the Lusitania, the need to distinguish between civilian and soldier. In the Titanic, the perils of hubris and corporate complacency. But there is a shipwreck you've likely never heard of, and the lessons it confers are the reason I've assembled you Aspies for another edition of Storytime with Uncle Fisty. So gather around the Mr. Rogers recliner, you may feel a slight lurch. My senior year in high school, my alma mater, like I'm sure many others, embarked on an annual field trip to Europe, a cruise specifically to Greece and Rome. No, this is not the story of my own shipwreck, nor have you been watching the YouTube channel of a long dead fucking sea ghost, though I do concede I am roughly the same color as one. I mentioned this end of the year post high school pre-college pilgrimage which serves as both a fine fucking field trip and something of a rite of passage for a reason. See it serves as such in much more than merely the west. In South Korea for example they enjoy a microcosmic variant. A end of the year embarkation to the sovereign island of Jeju. A popular holiday getaway and sort of a Hawaii-ish volcanic retreat. Students who achieve high marks earn passage inevitably aboard a cargo ferry for the 13 hour trip from the South Korean mainland to the the ovular landmass in question, retiring to their bunks on the previous night, only to emerge in the morning at their destination. And so hundreds of high school students clambered aboard the ferry seawall and celebrated. The night previous, they launched a revelatory fireworks display of such burning intensity, you would have thought John McCain took off from the fucking thing. I'm sure you can guess what occurred next. No, not any icebergs, torpedoes, or even a bow first fucking collision a la the Empress of Ireland. No. The seawall was sent to the bottom of the briny deep by a turn. Caught in an undercurrent and veering slightly off course, the order was given from the helm to correct as they approached the Jeju Island. But the vessel was more top-heavy than Cat Dennings and wasn't meant to turn more than five degrees at a time. See, cargo ferries have a hold filled with ground vehicles which are supposed to be secure in their cargo containers. These were about as secure as a crypto investment. As the cargo shifted to one side, the already unrecoverable list of the ship passed the 20% threshold and 40 and fucking 50 as the incompetent crew coordinated with an equally imbecilic coast guard relaying incorrect location data for a rescue operation that hadn't even begun to begin with a window of time for everyone on board to be saved something a little less than an hour and a half the ship's communication officer had a decision to make do you level with the people? Let them know it's all over if they don't get above decks and give them an honest shot at survival? Or do you crunch the mental math this hapless motherfucker did and play a pre-recorded message on a loop placidly imploring them all to put your life jackets on and remain in your cabins? Guess, bitch! <laughs> You see, as you may have clued the fuck into in the past, oh, three years or so, some people, an appalling number of people in truth, have a tendency, inborn almost, to assume by default that any order calmly intoned by an avuncular authority figure automatically has their interests at heart. And so not only did the high school students comply, educated as I can confirm from firsthand experience, in an Asiatic education system which emphasizes conformity and compliance above actual knowledge, but the teachers assigned to them split off into each individual cabin area and encouraged them all to do so. Now to be sure there's more blame to go around than 15 congressional sessions stacked on top of one another here. From the captain's initial order to the helmsman's stupidity hell, the Coast Guard's botched rescue operation and subsequent cover-up was so appalling it led to a massive shake-up in the South Korean government, culminating in a manhunt for a former businessman at the ferry company engineered by the South Korean government in a since-admitted transparent attempt to distract from the disaster. That businessman was found dead in a field sometime later. Cause of death unknown, might I add. Oh, it's a rabbit hole so big and blown out it's almost ready to settle down 
down and start a family, I highly recommend you read more on the subject. But the simple fact remains, no one dies if no one listens to the message. Everyone of the pitifully few people who refused to accede to that ludicrous order survived. And everyone who listened to an authority figure and complied compulsorily with their instructions in this instance is dead. It may not have a French Canadian corpse bride with a bald homo husband singing a sappy pop tune over top, but that to me is an infinitely more instructive lesson than anything to be gleaned from the fucking Titanic with apologies to Kate Winslet's cans. Some of us long ago caught on to the fact that the voice in the loudspeaker is two things, a recording and full of 50 Teen shades of shit. If after the events of the past few years and the still dawning revelations thereof, you reckon likewise, feel free to join the few, the proud, and the breathing up on deck. If not, no biggie. Keep your life jackets on and remain in your cabins. Why am I telling you all this? No reason. Just felt like telling a story. Godspeed. <laughs>